Hello, Wobbly Phil here. Most of you wrinkly riders will already be familiar with the Suzuki GT750, which was affectionately christened the Kettle here in the UK when it first hit the streets in the early 1970s. The idea of a liquid-cooled two-stroke made by a mainstream Japanese manufacturer blew our teenage brains. These days, water-cooled engines are the norm. But what if you took that water and lit a fire underneath it, then used the steam it produced to power the pistons? Believe it or not, that was how the first motorcycle was powered. And believe it or not too, they're still making record-breaking steam-powered bikes today. Two, one, go! One contender for the definition of the first ever motorcycle is the Steam Velocipede. Built by a French inventor with the help of a French blacksmith, which came into being at some point between 1867 and 1871. The Steam Velocipede was powered by a small, single-cylinder steam engine with an alcohol burner under the saddle to heat up the water. Presumably, riders were issued with a stern warning to lay off the baked beans before riding. Twin leather belts provided the final drive, while instrumentation consisted of a steam pressure gauge. The throttle was effectively a steam regulator. It could propel you down the chomps at something like 15 to 18 miles per hour and could get about 70 miles to the gallon of water. Another contender was the American Roper Steam Velocipede, which was billed as being able to outspeed any horse in the world. Not a claim that my MVT Easy Rider could have lived up to a hundred years later. Sylvester H. Roper's hickory-framed steam machine was invented sometime between 1867 and 1869, almost simultaneously with the French machine, and could do an impressive 40 miles per hour. At speeds like that, it's not surprising that Mr. Roper, a farmer's son from New Hampshire, died of a heart attack during speed trials at a velodrome in Boston. There was never any danger of me suffering a velocity-induced myocardial infarction on my easy rider. One of Mr. Roper's steam velocipedes came up for auction in 2012, when it's claimed to have fetched a high bid of $425,000. But then along came Daimler in 1885 with the invention of the world's first internal combustion-engined motorcycle, the Reitwagen. Motorcycle is a bit of a stretch because the Reitwagen had two diddly training wheels, but nonetheless it is generally considered to be the world's first actual motorcycle, as it had two big wheels and a petrol engine. Does that mean electric motorcycles aren't actually motorcycles? I'll leave you to fight over that in the comments. Of course, steam locomotives had already been long established and went on for practically another century, but that was the end of the road for steam-powered motorcycles. Or was it? Well, not quite. There's this steam-powered motorcycle, which apparently dates from 1912 and currently resides in the Musée Mécanique in San Francisco and a small number of wacky races-style steam bikes were around in the early decades of the 20th century. Then in 2014, steam enthusiast Bill Barnes from Pennsylvania decided to go after the world's speed record for a steam-powered motorcycle, aiming to defeat Mr. Roper's non-death-defying 40-ish miles per hour reputed record set in the late 19th century, the longest standing speed record in the books, which Mr. Barnes did, recording a speed of 80.4 miles per hour. But that's not the end of the steam story. Steam has often been described as a force of nature, so it's no surprise that when drag racer Graham Sykes decided to build a steam-powered two-wheeler, he called it force of nature. 
In 2023, Mr. Sykes piloted this contraption to speeds of around 180 miles per hour. Smashing Bill Barnes's 2014 record to bits. That said, Force of Nature isn't powered by what you'd traditionally call a steam engine. It does use steam, but purely as thrust. This eliminates any parasitic mechanical losses from rotating parts and other things like pesky cylinders reciprocating back and forth. Force of Nature doesn't even have to make its steam on board. As I've said on many occasions, I'm a mechanical numpty. But from what I can make out, a trackside burner fueled by hydrogenated vegetable oil, the kind of thing we used to spread on our toast. The first time you taste it, mm. you'll say, you still get me. Superheats pressurized water, which is then pumped on board, ready to be squirted through two rocket nozzles at the rear, where it instantaneously turns to steam generating huge amounts of thrust. Mr. Sykes says the acceleration is phenomenal. You just press the button and almost immediately you're experiencing 3.5G, about the same as a Formula One car pulls on corners. And the further it goes, the faster it goes as it gets lighter as the steam is ejected. It takes four hours, though, to warm up all that water, so you have to plan your trip to Tesco's well in advance. Just a couple of months ago, Force of Nature clocked a sub-six-second quarter mile at the UK's Santapod drag strip. According to the bike's website, there's a last chance to catch it doing its steamy stuff this year, on the 4th and 5th of October at the Melbourne Raceway. That's Melbourne near York in the north of England, not Melbourne, Australia. And uh, at this point I've run out of steam. You'll have to forgive this slightly self-indulgent video. I couldn't resist it as it combined my twin passions of motorcycles and steam engines. I'll be back with more weird, wonderful and almost certainly petrol-powered motorcycles next Friday. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please consider liking, subscribing, commenting and sharing to let YouTube know we're doing something right here at Three Fills. Thank you.